in terms of um, just kind of basics of LiDAR, because you know, I think we kind of kind of have a wide audience here. Um, you know, most of you are probably familiar with how radar works, at least on a high level, of you know, emitting sound waves given the speed, the constant speed of sound and atmospheric pressure or standard, you know, sea level atmospheric pressure or not. And then um, having those sound waves hit an object or not and reflect back or not. Um, and then using the time in between the emission and the um, receiving of those reflective sound waves back being able to characterize the distance uh, away from an object, and as well as using radar, maybe a, a, a blurry geometric characterization of what that object might look like. Um, LiDAR uses the same concept um, using very quickly emitted um, high frequency laser beams, um, and using the speed of light, we can also, using the same principle, uh, measure the distance traveled, um, as well as intensity, and I'll get into the intensity, which is related to the retroreflectivity of the um, of the objects that we we um, get those lasers returned back to us from. So let me go into the next slide, um, and this is just pulled directly. This diagram here is pulled directly from page three of the VLP, the Veldine VLP sixteen manual. Um, but essentially, actually, I think Quantergy and um, Veldine use eight bit values to represent their reflectivity. So we have. You know, 255 possible return values, um, and we're doing work to normalize those return values um, in intensity between, again, to be agnostic towards any different given LiDAR type. Um, and um, going back to reflectivity, so when we shine, the, when LiDAR beams or laser beams hit a given object um, or not, and then reflect back to us, given the reflectivity of that object, um, we're able to characterize the strength of, of that uh, of that return. And you know, I think I was talking to Scott earlier, and there's offline, and particular for our application, you know, things like stop signs, lane markings, um, you know, turn lanes, things like that um, are highly retroreflective, which are applicable to our application. We're able to you know quickly uh, characterize those as, as objects that we want to be paying attention to when we're creating our point clouds. Things like trees, houses, the pavement, sidewalks are less retroreflective and accordingly um, we characterize those differently. Yes. Um, I think we've got a question, what are the prices of LIDARs? Yeah. Um, so I think the, the cheaper models right now for um, Quantergy and Light and Velodyne are about just kind of quoting off the top of my head, but maybe about seven thousand. Yeah, around there. Um, it's a, yeah, there's, there's a, a range. range. There's I mean, a like range. The, the Quantergy I made, I think, is in the five to seven thousand dollar range. The H, the HDL sixty four from Velodyne I think goes up to about eighty thousand um, dollars. And the efforts in the industry to start utilizing solid state lidar um, are trying to bring that cost significantly down? Yes, solid state lighters can work with, with our software stack. Um, we have focused, we focus more just working on generic depth data um, and making our algorithms um, invariant to the different types of, um, the different, however you're, however you're generating it. Right, um, so I mean, in, any given additional sensor for us, given how we've um, architected our hardware abstraction layer, is simply a matter of writing a driver that utilizes our um, lock-free um, in-memory queues that we've, that we've used, um, which are part of a, an open source library that we also uh, will probably be putting up on, on GitHub as well. And, that's, and using that, we're able to communicate between threads and between the different modules in our software stack that are consuming the point clouds that our sensors are generating. 